welcome to another Building in Public update on my We Should Watch project. Uh, we're on our landing page. You can see at this point we've got a nice little search bar up top. Nothing too fancy. This component is right here. Uh, it's just in a form. The action of the form is updated based on whatever the user types in. Uh, we're keeping track of the term in state and we're just updating based on the target value, right? So all that normal stuff you're used to doing in React. What I want to look at is actually on my media page. We just watched this movie the other night, so now it's kind of in my head a lot. Going through the search, hitting enter, you can see up top my, my URL changes to slash search slash pay it forward. Um, I've got a route here in Next.js under search. You can see the brackets on search term. And all it's doing is it's pulling in from the URL, sending it to my back end, which recalls out to the external movie database API with the, the uh, search information. And we pull in whatever data we get back and display it here. I've got to clean this up a little bit, right? I'm not really handling when I don't get stuff. I'm um, clicking on this. I've got my little pop-up, which I adjusted a little bit. Still not super thrilled about it, but there it is. And now if I click on view details, we go to a details page which again, needs a lot of love. Let's look at that details page. You can see here, I've got another route media with the media ID in brackets, uh, where here the URL is changed to an ID and then media type equals movie. So we pull that stuff in with Next.js router. And what this does is it just calls back to my backend, sends that information out to the movie database API. We pull that back in, we send this back up to the client and we're just displaying a bunch of that data here. Nothing too crazy exciting, but what I want to look at is this at the bottom. I'm going to move myself to the top. Don't be alarmed. I'm now at the top. So this information down here is what I want to look at, right? Where I have the watch providers, let's say. So I'm on my component for my streaming options. We'll actually look through it in a second. What we're doing here is we're taking our media type and our ID, and we're sending that to the back end and calling out to the movie database with that information. They're providing these, these provider information. And what we actually get back is a whole list of stuff. I'm going to zoom in and look just at the US portion. It gives us something for every region, but I'm only using the US data right now. And you can see we get back an object that has a couple things in it. It has a link and it has a page for the movie database. It has rent with an array with a bunch of stuff in it. It has buy with an array with a bunch of stuff in it and flat rate, which is their term for like streaming. Like if, if you have a subscription to a provider. So I didn't like the way that this information was provided back to me. And if we go look at their actual page as an example, you can see how they handled this where they just for each key in an object, uh, they just map through then the array associated with that key and display that information, right? They have prices. I don't have prices on my end right now. Uh, not sure if I will or won't, but I don't like this setup. I don't want to show every provider, you know, multiple times. I, I don't like the way that looks. Uh, so what I did instead, you can see on my page, I've got one entry for each provider and the options that are available for that provider. So how did we actually go about doing this? Well, now we can look at the code. When this component mounts, we're calling use effect, right? And we're calling this get data function, which is an asynchronous function, which just makes an Axios call to my backend, which just sends our data in params. It's just making a get call. And if we get results back that are that include US information, we're going to do some stuff. Otherwise, we're just not going to deal with any of it. And we set streaming to false. I've got a state for loading to false. I've got a state for loading and a state for my streaming data. So here, if we're loading, we just return that we're loading. If we set streaming or if we set loading to false and we don't have any data in streaming data, then we just return no data found. Otherwise, we're going to do some stuff. So we get back this big object with all these things in a way I don't want to use it. And we call this reordered function, reordered data function. We store the results from that function in reordered and make that our state. Right, so um, we'll look at that function in just a second. You can see here in state, I've got this typed out as stream options. I've got my interfaces in another file here um, and we can look and these are the props that we get in, media type and ID. 
This is provider data, which is this stuff, but only the parts I really care about right now, logo path and provider name. Availability data is the whole thing where we have rent and provider data as an array by flat rate provider data as an array and link as a string. But this is what I want to end up with. Basically, I wanted to make an object that has my provider name as a string and then the value associated with that key would be an object which stores the logo path and an array of string for our watch options, our buy, our rent, our streaming, whatever. So let's look at how we accomplish that. This reorder data function, we send in our original giant object, the US portion anyway. We make an object up front. We're calling it data, it's stream options type. And then we do a for in loop, right? Because we're kind of going through this object, we're iterating through the object. So for let watch option, which would be rent or link technically, or buy, those are our watch options now in this case. For each watch option in the object we get, if watch option is link, continue. I don't want to deal with link. I don't want it at all. Just kind of skip that iteration and let's go to the next thing. And then we say for, we do a for of loop now, let provider of object watch option. So now for each one of these objects in the object watch options. And I like, let's look at rent, right? Object watch option. In this case, let's start with rent in this array for each provider in this. I'm just going to pull out some information. You could get rid of this if you wanted to, but we're going to say let host equal provider dot provider name. So in this case, we would take Apple iTunes, let logo equal provider dot local path. So in this case, we take this whole thing. And now we look in this object, which we're making into a hash map, right? Here's our DSA stuff. So we say if we don't find an instance of Apple iTunes in this data object, then we're going to make it. We're going to say throw Apple iTunes in there as a key. And then our value associated with that key, let's get rid of this, is now going to be an object with logo path, the logo that we just pulled out and watch option. First, we're going to make it a blank array. The reason that we're doing that, well, now we're going to look and find in our data object, that key we just made in this case, Apple iTunes, and then we're going to push onto it the watch option rent that we're currently on. So now as we go through each of these watch options and make entries in our hash map for all these providers, now when I get to buy, when we go this th through this thing again, now we're on buy as a watch option, right? We let provider of watch option that we pull out our information and now we know we are, we're going to find this data in there, right? We're going to find this post Apple iTunes in our data. So now I go to that specific entry in our object dot watch option dot push. And now I push on this new watch option that we're on this buy value. And then if we find that again in streaming, it'll push streaming onto that array too. Cool. That's the whole process of that. Let's uh, actually take a look at the data and just kind of see what it looks like before we move on to the next portion of this code. So if we look in our console, this first object here is the base data that we received from the movie database where we've got all the stuff in buy, all this stuff in more one thing in flat rate, and then a bunch of things in rent, right? There's our array of objects. And now after we run through our algorithm here, we make a hash map basically. And now here's our object where we have our provider name. And then the object associated with that key is logo path with that data. And then watch option with our array of options. Wonderful. But Eric, we can't map through an object in react. You're correct. We can't do that. So what we actually do is here's my return statement down here. And we're going to take object.keys and we pass in stream data. That's the object now we have in state or our hash map. Object.keys just goes through that object and pulls out all the keys and gives us an array of those keys. So just an array of strings with our 
Apple TV, Amazon Video, Google Play Movies, whatever. We have an array of that now. So we dot map that. And then for each provider in that array, we're going to return another function here called stream info. And we pass in each provider to stream info. Here is stream info, which gives us most of this display down here, right? Um, we pass in the provider and what we're going to do is we're going to access the object we have in state in stream data. And we're going to say our provider data is stream data provider, right? So let's look at this again. Basically, if we look at Apple TV as the first one, right? Apple TV, it's going to find Apple TV and provider data is going to be the value associated with that key. So this whole object. Then we return, you know, our, our JSX stuff. We're going to make a div. Our key is our provider. So Apple TV in this first case, we have an image here where I call another function that's in another file. I think we looked at that before. Maybe um, it just calls out and gets a poster image based on we're sending in provider data dot logo path. So we send in this thing and it makes a whole string for us to put back as our source and a size that we want. Um, our alt is just our provider, our name, Apple TV. We are passing in just a P tag with the provider name that we passed in here. And then I've got another dot map where we're mapping through our watch options, this array, right? This array buy and rent. And I'm calling another function here, buy rent, the buy purchase rent function where we pass in each of the options. And what buy purchase rent does is we're expecting option to be either buy or rent or flat rate. We might have some other stuff here. I'm not really sure. I'm making a map up front. Const map equals an object where buy is buy with a capital B, rent is rent with a capital R, and flat rate is streaming. And basically we say for each one of these now, we map through that array. And if we find that option in our map, we're gonna return the value, right? So if we find buy, we return buy with a capital B. And if we don't find it, then we're just going to return the option just in case there's something that I'm not aware of. If there's a different thing than buyer rent or flat rate. And there we go. Now we've got this whole thing. And the way that I wanted to view it, uh, we get to do some fun DSA stuff. We get to work with hash maps and make our fun algorithms here. So this, this is the kind of stuff I'm really finding that I enjoy in all of this coding work is really working with these sets of data and manipulating them into ways that make more sense or, or work for what I'm trying to do. For those of you out there just getting into DSA work, take it slow, aim for small improvements. You're going to hear some people say that DSA stuff doesn't matter for front end dev work. Maybe that's partially true for some more complex stuff in DSA, but it definitely helps you do things like this and get to the solutions way faster than you otherwise might have if you weren't practicing DSA. Anyway, that's it. Sorry if this was a little fast. I've only got a 15 minute time limit with LinkedIn videos, but if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and thank you for following along.